So uh, if you can um, jump onto GitHub, uh, this is where uh, the code is uh, for our next session. Uh, and then uh, I, we couldn't get it on the same uh, code lab as Martin. So what we have is uh, some notes for you. Yeah, so the notes is where you can follow along. Um, so over here we have the chat application, which Martin just completed. And uh, the chat application is where you can just use some dummy data to send and receive messages. Uh, we will continue from here, uh, but I would like you guys to uh, not use the same code uh, because uh, there are certain keys we would like to use with that could be shared across all the uh, all, all the attendees here and we can actually exchange uh, those keys. So uh, I'll give uh, us um, maybe a couple of minutes to download the code from GitHub. Yeah, so uh, it's on github.com. And what I have done is act on GitHub, I have created uh, different branches. And I would like if you are using Git, you guys to use the Firebase initial branch. So uh, the idea would be that a, when you are cloning this repo, you can clone the repo. and then use the branch. So I'd like you guys to be on this branch. So give you guys a couple of minutes uh, and maybe a couple of minutes to stretch out, have some water. That was a good exhausting session, uh, Martin. Uh, if you have any Q&A, maybe we can take that now while you guys are doing it. Any questions? has any questions then uh, are you guys uh, ready with the code uh, have you downloaded it uh, yes no can you let us know on the chat window if not that's all right we're going to share everything else uh, so you can always follow it later
a bit of a quiet audience. So we can we can start with our next session. Um, so uh, we can we saw that Martin was able to um, use Flutter uh, and um, all its widgets to actually easily create an app uh, very quickly. And that that app uses uh, dummy data. So there's a lot of times we would like to store the data in some backend. And it's always a requirement for us to use some API or, or, or a database. So what we are gonna look into is how Firebase can help us to do that. And we will be going through a few of the Firebase products, uh, Firebase authentication, uh, Firestone storage uh, and others. Um, Sumit, we uh, can't really see your screen, or at least I'm only seeing the folders, the explore folder. Okay, is that yeah, cool? Okay. Got it. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna go back one screen. Yeah. So. Uh, Firebase is divided, uh, is divided its tools into uh, three different categories. Um, one that will help you to build a better apps, uh, that is auth, functions, store, fire store, cloud storage. The other uh, category is what's gonna enable you to improve your app quality. So performance monitoring, text, test labs, and app distribution. And the final Category is to grow and engage with your users. That would be products like analytics, um, dynamic links, cloud messaging. So combining all these 20 plus features uh, that Firebase can provide, you can actually engage, build apps, and have a very quality uh, have apps with high quality on the app stores for both, uh, both for all the environments. So Firebase provides lots of different uh, SDKs. Uh, so it provides iOS, Android, web, even for gaming, uh, Unity. Uh, so these are all the SDKs. And we're gonna look into the Firebase SDK that uh, Firebase provide to build, continue with our chat app. And the reason why we can think of using Firebase is basically you can build faster and easier app. You don't have to think of uh, having a backend service. Uh, you can use all the other products which I mentioned, the three categories. Uh, you can understand and engage with your UX to see where, which areas of the app is not being used and improve your app. And then you can grow your app with uh, messaging and other products and engage much more with your users. The first thing we're going to look into is the Firebase Auth. Uh, now, you know, in order for us developers to use uh, something quickly, especially as an authentication service, we're kind of scraping around to see which service can we use. Firebase Auth provides us with lots of different IDP um, uh, that can enable us to use Google, Facebook, or even email, even sign in with phone uh, as a service. So it provides you identity as a service. You can use um, uh, phone number and custom auth if you have designed your own auth. And the way it works is basically uh, having all these providers, it creates a token for a particular user in its own database. And if you are moving from uh, one auth provider to another auth provider, you can actually reuse the token within the app. So you don't have to ask them to sign up, sign in again. So Fire Firebase automatically handles things. Uh, then uh, the next uh, things uh, which we as developers needs to know is um, how can I save some data? Where can I save the data that uh, the users uh, or the app needs? And Cloud Firestore can help us with that. It can store and sync data in real time. It's a NoSQL style database. And uh, what you can do is you can collect documents in, in different structures. But also does it automatically handles the offline and online. So if the user is offline, it will store it locally. And when the user comes online, it can actually push it up. Uh, and then the users or us developers, we don't have to worry about scaling. It will, uh, so it automatically handles scaling. If you have too many users coming to your website uh, or your app, you can actually, so that automatically handles the scaling aspect of it. Just like our Cloud Firestore, it also provides another database type, which is Firebase Real-Time Database. It stores the data in a JSON tree. It's a very quick and dirty way of getting the data onto, uh, uh, onto Firebase. Uh, it handles real-time updates, yeah? And also just, um, just like Cloud Firestore, it handles offline um, 
and uh, what you can do is you can and you can use it to be closer to the user so if the user is in Europe, you, it can handle, it, it supports presence. So it can see whether the user, where the user is coming from and give them the closest servers and, and then do a replication. Uh, the next thing, uh, there is a lot of requirements sometimes to actually store um, data that are not um, uh, just uh, database tables, it could be uh, media files, could be images, could be uh, videos. And Firebase Cloud Storage can help us with that. You can store and serve media content. Again, just like uh, our previous uh, database, it scales automatically. And then it actually supports something called as global edge cache. So it caches near to the user. At the same time, it provides offloading. So uh, if the user does not have good connection, or if the connection breaks, it actually can retry. So it has an inbuilt retry mechanism. The SDK just supports that. So if, if uh, there's low connectivity, it will wait and then it will transfer on, on fly. What it can also support is if you have multiple users and then they are uploading some, some assets and you want certain users to be, uh, certain authenticated users to actually view those um, uh, assets, but uh, you want to stop other users to not view it, you can actually use uh, authentication along with, so along with Firebase authentication and uh, Firebase storage, you can manage uh, what a user can see and what the user can, uh, uh, and prevent the user to not view the content. Uh, the next bit is uh, app distribution. So you can get those apps to the testers quickly. You can get the feedback from the users. And then uh, what it auto automatically does, it, it automatically collects the, the matrices and crash analysis. And this is also very good for, uh, for aspiring developers to actually use this. So they can see uh, before they go live, uh, to get those apps on the hands of the users and test it and see where the app caches and gives you a, a good matrix around that. Uh, this is uh, again Firebase, it's a Google product and this is one of the features which I like. Uh, so it automatically gives you uh, Google Analytics which is free and uh, it actually enables us to use unlimited app analytics. It, um, it, um, what you can do is you can actually segment users, you can understand how which type of users are actually using the app. And then you can export that data using Google BigQuery which then you can use it for cloud messaging. Yeah. So cloud messaging uh, is a notification, you can use cloud messaging for notification across Android, iOS or, or uh, uh, web, but you can use the same audiences that you have uh, used in uh, Google uh, Analytics for Firebase and target them. So you can do some custom targeting. You can do A-B testing using that. And then you can use engagement analytics to see whether how engaged you are with, with your users. Uh, another feature which I, I like is basically there are sometimes you would like to have some, some feature toggles. Uh, Firebase remote config can enable us to build that out. So uh, it's a flag, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, on, on different apps, you can actually say, okay, I would like to enable for these set of users a particular feature, whereas these have a different feature. To do something like that, what you have to do is you have to deploy the app again, you have to build the app again. If you use Firebase remote config, that is a key value pair uh, in the cloud, you can actually use that to enable feature toggle some of the features for certain users and see how they are actually using the app. Work with the UX to actually um, uh, figure out whether that particular new user flow is actually working. You can then also use it for uh, certain uh, audiences or even custom targeting. So there are lots of uh, different apps uh, which Firebase can provide. It is 20 plus apps. We're gonna just use a few of them today. Uh, so we're gonna use the Firebase Auth, uh, Firebase uh, Cloud Store, Cloud Storage. If we have enough time, we can use Analytics and Cloud Messaging. So just a reminder, uh, you can download the code from here for now and um, you can follow along uh, if in the, uh, in, in, uh, using this talk. So I'm gonna jump back to the code.
So this is where I have downloaded the code. I'm going to open it in VS Code. Now, if I run the app, we'll see uh, the same place where uh, oh, Martin. So, has submit one moment. Uh, we cannot really see the the VS Code Studio. Uh, VS Code. Can you see now? No. The sh sharing is paused. Yeah, I only see the the Chrome, uh, Google Chrome browser. Okay, let me try to see if I can reshare it again. Can you see now? Yep, we see it. Okay. So while the app is building, uh, I will, uh, Michelle, you cannot see VS Code. Okay, uh, Martin, you can't see now. Okay, fine. Emojis. Uh, <laughs> so while it is um, building, uh, first thing we need to do if you're building an app uh, with Firebase is to basically create a new project. I've already created a project for GDG Flutter and that's why I, I insisted you guys to actually use this um, uh, repository. So let's just create a dummy project to see how it looks like. So um, uh, you click on, you go to uh, console.firebase.google.com, you log in with your account, and then uh, you start a new project. I'm gonna name this project uh, GDG test of uh, one. Yeah. It says, okay, yeah, it's available. Then you go through uh, some steps. So uh, are you, would you like to enable uh, Google Analytics for your Firebase project? Continue, uh, ask us to select an account. You can have multiple accounts. I'm going to basically use the same account because I'll delete it later. And then it will uh, spend some time creating the project for you. almost done and the app is also working so, so we are back to where uh, Martin has left so this is an app but I have done something special with the app which I will tell you now so once the project is ready you'll see it in the project list you have all those options which I just showed you so you got you can actually enable uh, authentication database storage and other uh, aspect of your SAS. As I said, it's uh, been defined into three different category. This is for develop, this is for analytics, and this is to grow your customers. So what we'll do is we'll actually create um, uh, an iOS app or an Android app. I'm using Android. I'm not using my Mac right now. So I'll go and add an Android app. So one thing which is important is to basically get the package name. Yeah. When you create the app that uh, with Martin, uh, the, the name of the app uh, or the package name of the app is something like com.example.gdg. Yeah. So what I would like uh, us to do is basically use uh, com.gdg.gdg for Flutter Firebase chat. And then uh, within the app, you find replace uh, com.example. So you go in here and then you do a find replace and 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 change uh, your app ID. So I'm just going to show you where all I went in and changed. Yeah. So you have to change your Android manifest file. You have to change your build.cradle and you have to change your 
uh, iOS app uh, runner.x code. So once you have done the changes uh, and have made sure that it is the same name that you will be using, you will then go back to your uh, Firebase uh, console and you register the app. Once you register the app, it will ask you to download a config file. And this is the most tedious task. So you download the Google services .json, and then you go back to your, uh, your code. You have to do some changes on, of, on your code. So you have to go to build. Uh, so on Android, you have to go to build.cradle. Uh, and then you have to add this class path. Then you have to uh, go to app and add this plugin. And then over here, you have to add the dependency. This all mentioned in the documentation here. So it, this is gonna show us what to do. Uh, so, so, and then also once you have downloaded the Google services or JSON file, uh, you have to add it over here. So Android app and then Google services JSON. So the branch I have is already having all these things set up for you. And, it's, uh, and, and then you hit next. And this is the steps it's saying, okay, to use the Firebase SDK, add uh, the dependency, add the implementation and the plugin. Yeah. And then you have the app working. While it is doing that, we can actually quickly look into how we can do the same for iOS. So we paste our app bundle. That's why I said make the app bundle, bundle the same. Then you register the app. It will ask you to download the Google services.plist file you have to then right click and open uh, the iOS folder, which I cannot do because I'm using a PC uh, in Xcode. So you'll get an option if you're using a Mac. Uh, and then copy that into this folder. Make sure that while you're copying it, there's a, there's a checkbox copy, uh, copy items if needed. And that has to be checked. It's in my notes, so you can have a look into what setting is that. And then next. You don't have to, you just skip this step. You don't need to do that. It is uh, an old setting. Uh, you don't need to do that. If it doesn't work, then you do a pod in it again. Uh, this will bring all the pods and then you install it again. But mostly it's gonna work for you. Next, uh, skip that. It doesn't have anything to do with Flutter. And then you have the app ready for both iOS and Android. Okay, um, so the other thing I did here is basically I went in and added authentication. So we need to uh, have user authentication for our app. So uh, we, I went in and added an authentication and set up a sign-in method. While I did that, I just wanted this app to work with emails and passwords. So I said, click on email and password, enable that and save. So now we have email and password enabled as an authentication method for our app. The next thing I need is a database. So I'll go to the database tab and I will create a database for us. Yeah. And I will put it in test mode. If it's in production mode, you need to manage security as I showed you in my slides that a Firebase auto automatically uh, manages all the security for you. So you need to make sure which level of security do you want to do. It's in a test mode and it's only available for 30 days and, and then you have to go back into the production mode. Yeah. I've done that. And then for my app, I need storage. So while that's happening, um, I will jump back to the code. So let's assume that we got the database ready, we got the authentication ready. So the next thing to do is basically to our propspec.yaml, we would like to add the packages for Firebase. So the, fire, the packages I'm using right now is the Cloud Firestone, uh, Firebase Auth, Firebase Core, Firebase Messaging, and Firebase Storage. So our app will be basically using these to log in the user, save the chats to the database, and also save the images to the database. 
Okay. Um, I'm not sure if anyone is following with us, but um, <laughs> I will just keep on continuing with this. Uh, let's see if the database is ready. Yeah, we got the database ready. And I'm just going to say, uh, add how, how do you add a storage? Yeah, so just add that same thing. You have certain rules for the storage next and then done. So the first thing we need is uh, authentication for our app. So I'm going to go in and add that. So in our lib folder, uh, up till now, what Martin has done is basically created a chat screen. He have some user data, some message data, and a helper class, which contains some constant. So what we'll do is we'll create um, another folder, and this is a best practice. Basically, divide your app into different um, um, folders uh, so that you can uh, separation of concern. So I'm gonna create a new folder called a services. And in there, I will create a new file, auth underscore dot dot. Okay. It's a, a normal class, so And in there, what I would like to do is I like to have three functions, uh, one for sign up, one for login, and one for logout. So this is what we want from our app uh, login. So Firebase, uh, future void sign up, uh, that, login, and logout. So uh, let's just see how the sign up will look like. So for our sign up method, I will actually use auth result. Now, if you look at it, it auto-completed, it gave me, it auto-imported all the package. So it gave me the Firebase auth, Firebase auth dot dot. This actually came from what we did here. So in our package, puffspec.yaml, we had Firebase auth here. So it actually imported that. And I will then say auth result equals to Wait. create user with email and password, because we are using email and password, take email as the parameter, and then password as the parameter. Okay, we then will, um, we will uh, put a try catch block around that to see if uh, the sign up has failed. So I'm just going to copy some piece of code and Add it here. Yeah. Uh, so, out result equals to await Firebase or dot create email and password. And if it fails, we need to catch that exception um, by using the platform exception. And I'm going to import the service for that. Uh, let's just quickly build in the login and uh, and logout. Um, it's similar to that. We are going to use the Firebase auth and then we will call the login method and we will call the logout method. So uh, login, Firebase auth, sign in with email and password. So over here we did a create and then over here we are going to do a sign in uh, with email and password. And then uh, over here we have a logout. Uh, let's see why is it not working? Do I have an extra brace? Yeah, extra brace. So the code looks like this. So we've got a sign in, uh, a login, and a logout method. And then we are using the Firebase instance for that. OK. Now we'd like also to store. So once you have logged in, I'd like to know who is this. So we'd like to store that user in, in the database. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually create a new folder uh, in the, our helpers, a new file in our help, helpers uh, folder. 
and they made something like constants. Now this constants, which I could have used the app constants, but I'm gonna just keep it separate for this talk. We are going to, so this is just a constants file where we are trying to share some data with different uh, areas of our app. So in here, I created a, a database instance, so Firestone DB equals to Firestone instance. Uh, I'm going to store all my users in the users folder, user collection in the database. So user ref equals to db dot collection dot users. It has not created it, it's just a reference to our collection. Uh, I'm thinking I will actually store the chats into our chat uh, collection. So I've just created this uh, beforehand. And then uh, also need to make use of our storage. So I've just created the storage instance in the constants folder and get the reference out of it. So going back to our auth service, I will actually then go in and uh, say if it is authenticated user, we will like to. Uh, User ref, yeah, we would like to, uh, we don't need that. I'm not doing the messaging right now. We would like to store the user in the user reference, which is our user collection, uh, and then set all the usernames and stuff like that. So, uh, so we got our authentication method ready, uh, which is service. And uh, the next thing we need is basically a screen. Um, but before I uh, go to the screen, I would uh, like to improve our user model, which uh, Martin has created. So going back to a user model, it has ID, name, profile, image, and email. I would like to add more details to it. Yeah. Uh, so what this right now does, it does not know anything about our database, uh, what values are coming from the database. So what we need is basically map the data coming from the database, which we have done in the auth service and user ref .document .set data, and map all these parameters with the ones that is there in the model. So again, uh, the magic of copy paste, I'm gonna bring all the stuff which we need for the users, which is not much different. So it's the same ID, name, profile, image, email, bio, and token. Token, we'll use it for messaging, um, uh, but we'll look into that later. And then we will use a factory, uh, which actually gives us instance to that particular class, dot from doc. And the document snapshot is coming from the cloud Firestore package. And then over here, I'm doing the mapping between ID, which is a document ID, name, image, and other parameters. Okay, uh, so uh, from doc is a way you can map your user to the document snapshot that has been returned from here. Okay, now uh, the next thing, uh, uh, looks like the messages are broken because uh, we were using a different ID. Uh, yep, the user ID is, is, is different. So I'm just going to fix them. So make them strings. And I think it's from here to here. Yeah. So just made them strings because we are getting the document ID from the database. It's I think a good rather than an int. And then we kept the rest of the stuff the same. Yeah. So we still have, um, uh, we have an auth service, we have a, a new uh, model, uh, and then we have uh, the messages, which almost look the same. But we don't have a screen uh, for login. So let's just create a screen under the screens folder. Uh, we will create a new file. And in the login screen, um, it's a stateful widget, just like what Martin showed, I'm going to do stful and 
auto completed login screen then get the references right uh, we don't want to go through the entire talk on on how to build a login screen and uh, the code is there in my notes so basically i'm just going to um, quickly sh copy the code uh, so that and walk through it so that we don't waste time uh, just building the code for it. If you look at it, I'm just going to copy the entire code. What it does is uh, in the login screen, uh, we have a login form and a sign up form. Uh, the login form has uh, two text box, uh, one for email and password. The forms need a login key uh, so that it understands the state of the form and the sign up form also needs a, a sign up key. Uh, and then uh, we do uh, use the text form field. Uh, we actually validate whether the user is um, uh, filling in some data. So if it's not empty, um, this is separation of, of code. So every text field has its own function. So we have the name function, we have the build email function and the build password function. On submit over here, we are calling the auth service and then we calling the login method passing in the email and password that has been uh, passed through. Uh, and then if, uh, so we have, we are actually managing two tabs. If the selected index is zero, he's trying to log in. If the selected index is one, he's trying to validate. So we got the login screen ready, but we do not have uh, anything calling that login screen. So the next thing to do is basically we go to main dot dot. Uh, right now the main uh, dot dot is actually uh, going to the home is going to the chat screen. So we'll actually update that to login screen. Okay, and we will redo the app. Oh. So now we got the login screen, which contains login and sign up. So user can log in or sign up. I'm going to create a new login, GDG demo. Uh, the email could be GDG 10. And the password could be anything. If you look at it, um, uh, I'm just going to show you what it was doing behind the scenes. It actually is actually using the Firebase auth, uh, calling the Google API method, and then connecting to the service and uh, using Firebase auth to authenticate, or in, in this case, signing up the user. Okay. So let's just see if the user uh, sign up is being done. Uh, we will go back to our Firebase console. I'm going to jump back. So this is the test account we created. I'm going to jump back to the other account that we have. So this is the account which we will be using throughout. And over here in the database, uh, we actually save the, the user. So let's see if the user exists in the database. So we have uh, a GDG Sweden uh, at gdg.com, uh, the name and the token. So we got the data, uh, we got the user in the database. And now what we can do is we can even sign in using that user. So I'm gonna use my, my user here. And okay. uh, does it working? Uh, notify ID listener about listener and Let's see, we have internet. Yep. 
Single question. Uh, when you send this password, do you does the app see the password or is it uh, secured so it goes straight to the service? It, uh, so the authentication happened within the service. Um, uh, so the app does not, so app knows the password over here because we are sending the password as a text box. Yeah? So yeah. when we called it in, um, in our auth service, yeah, we are mapping the password. But this is a very simple case I have used. I'm using the yeah, okay. email and password. Yeah. Uh, if you are a bit more, uh, if you're using um, uh, Facebook auth or Google uh, sign in, you basically just use uh, Google sign in. So it actually transfers the token down. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, so it looks like um, we have uh, the sign in working. Just to see, just to say that it is working, I'm just going to do a print. Uh, let's see. So from the login screen, there's no redirection to any other screen yet. Yeah, so that's why uh, when I click on a button, it says, yep, I did something. Uh, but you can see uh, over here in the log, uh, you can see it says sign in. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, we have our sign in working, it's stored in the database. So the next thing to do is basically move from this signing logging screen into a new screen. And from the design, it looks like we would like to go to the, or the, uh, the attendee screen. So on the screens folder, I'll create a new, new uh, file. Then the underscore screen dot dot. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is a screen where I would like uh, once the user is logged in, uh, we will see the list of attendees. Yeah. So same uh, with the magic of copy paste. I'm going to bring a lot of code in here and then explain the code. So uh, so here what we have is basically we have a, a stateful widget. Uh, the stateful widget actually says, I would like to get list of attendees. And how am I going to get those attendees? I will actually go to the database, which we don't have yet, and get some users. Uh, what I would like to do is I'd like to show, uh, so this is the, our app bar. Uh, app bar has a title text attendees. And then uh, I will have uh, a widget, yeah. So instead of putting all the code in one place, it's a good habit to actually uh, have your code in different widgets if you are reusing it. So I'm gonna introduce another folder where I will create all my widgets. And this widget will have a new file, all underscore a then s And just going to go back, copy that. And then real estate for widget, all attendees, and then it returns that. Yeah. So if I go back, it's happy. Uh, it says, okay, I know what it is. It takes an additional parameter, which we'll pass later. Uh, but what we noticed is basically there are a few new things which I added. One of the thing is user data. So when the user is signed in, or if you want to work something with the user, what we like to do is we like to have a model that actually stores all the data which the user is using, so that I can pass that data along with, uh, with uh, along my screen. So I can pass the data with my chat screen, which my widget screen. So what I'll do is I'll create a new file in here and I will name the file user underscore data dot dot. And in the user, it's a very simple one. Um, 
but I'm going to introduce you with a, to a new concept. So uh, user data extends something called a change notifier. Now this is like a listener uh, where if anything changes on the current user ID or any other property which we may have in future, the the, the, the widgets that those, those are listening to it can be notified and they can do something with it. Yeah. So user data currently uses a current user ID, which I would like to store. And then uh, uh, if I go back to my uh, screen, user data is working. Uh, briefly, Martin mentioned something about uh, state, and then he also mentioned something about provider. Now, provider is a way, it's, it's actually is a DI way of passing data across various screen. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use the provider package. Uh, so this will be helpful for us to pass data between screens. Uh, and then uh, it's a mixture of DI and state management. And uh, this is passing data within widgets and uh, above widgets. So I'm just going to use that. and my provider and do a pub get get the provider okay now we got we got our provider and uh, if I go back to the attendee screen, uh, let's see if the references work. I, I sometimes have a bug with Visual Studio where when I actually do a pub get, it does not like it. I may have to just go in, stop it and then start again. Okay, let's go, let's go back and see. Yeah, it's not complaining about the providers anymore. That's good. I think so. Okay. So uh, we managed, uh, so, so what we managed here is basically we created a, a model for containing all the user data. Then we introduce a new concept of provider where we will actually use it to pass it along with different screens. In this case, we'll move the user ID from the login screen to the attendee screen and, and, and further. I'm just gonna go and see if I can download provider one more time. Meanwhile, that is happening. Uh, we noticed that we also need a database service. So it's a service again. So we put all our services in our services folder. I create a new file and the name of the file is database underscore service dot dot. Now what this will contain is basically we need to get the user and uh, get all the, all the user information. Uh, if I can remind you, uh, we are storing all the users in the user collection. So we will have two functions, one for get users and the other one for the current user. So class database service, uh, get user, uh, it actually takes the user ID and then it uh, gets the user from the doc. So if I, if you remember, this is where we do the mapping. So user from doc is going to get the document snapshot and do the mapping. And then get all user actually gets all the users from the database and these could be all our attendees of the event. Okay. Uh, so we have the all attendees um, uh, widget. So all attendees widget needs to show all the attendees and it's a list view. Uh, and the list view will contain the, the image and the text uh, as per our design. So we go to all attendees. Uh, it's a, a, a lot of code again. Uh, so I'm going to 
paste here and I'm, I will explain what it means. So uh, it's uh, a list view. A list view uses the builder. It counts all the users. Uh, and then what we may have is basically on touch of my uh, uh, user panel, we will actually move to the chat screen. Uh, also, uh, it has a, a container that contains a row. The row will have the, the circle avatar for the user image, and it will have the name of the user and the bio of the user as per the design. I'm using another package here. Uh, so the user profile are stored in our storage. So it could be that it is a network image and I need to bring that network image from the network onto the device, but I don't want to keep on doing it again and again. So there's another package, which is the cache network image provider that we can use to, uh, to help us with that. So uh, I will copy that and bring it here. So whenever you hit save, it actually tries to do flutter package get and get all the packages that you're referencing. So going back to our, so I think after this, we will get this working. Yep, that's good. So we got the cache, cache network image provider and we have our widget that contains a list of attendees. So on our main attendee screen, okay, and that also worked. Uh, we don't have any more errors. So I'm just gonna go through that again. So you have the init state of the, when the app, uh, when the screen gets loaded, uh, you set up the attendees. The, uh, what you need is the current user ID. And uh, what you also need is uh, the, all the users. So once you, once a screen is mounted, you set the state and you set the variable of list of users as that. That is what we are passing to our widget. Okay, let's just see if this works. Uh, so what we have not done is basically we on the main dot dot uh, right now, it actually takes us to the login screen. And the login screen does not take us anywhere after that. Uh, so what we want to do is move from the login screen once the user is logged in onto our attendee screen. So for that, uh, we may need to do a little bit more refactoring. So uh, the first thing we'll do is basically, uh, it's another good practice is to give IDs to our screens um, that will be used by our routes. So a login screen, I'm gonna give an ID, which is a login screen ID. And I feel like when we actually use our attendee screen, we already gave that. So we have an ID for this. Go back to the main dot dot. Uh, so what, what we need is basically uh, when the user logs in, yeah, we, uh, so the main calls are an app. The run app uh, can decide whether the user is already logged in. So you don't have to keep on logging in again and again. So what we'll do is we'll actually move this whole idea into a, a new uh, widget here, which is ST less widget. And the name of the widget is my app. And then in there, we will actually this. So what we're doing here is basically we're saying, okay, give us the screen ID. Where do you want us to go? Uh, we use a stream builder and I think we need to import the Firebase auth. So if the user is authenticated already, yeah, and we have the current user ID, uh, redirect him to the attendee screen. Otherwise, go to the login screen. Yeah, so these are all the references to all our screens. 
So um, again, I'm going to go through that. So give me the screen ID of where do you want me to redirect? Yeah. So if you're already authenticated, go to the attendee screen. Otherwise, go to the login screen. Yeah. And it actually uses the stream build. Uh, this is the same code as above. Uh, so this is the same. So run material app. So we will actually remove it from there. Uh, we have the same thing, which are, we have the same themes. And then on the home, we'll say, give us the screen ID. Where do you want us to do? And I mentioned something about the routes and that's what we did for our login screen and attendees. So the route manages where do you want to route the, the, the screens within Flutter. Yeah. Uh, we are using providers and we need to initiate those providers. The best thing to initiate those provider is on your main. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the run app. So what this is doing is basically saying initiate all the providers, yeah. And our chain notify provider is our user data. So register that. Uh, so provider pattern uh, uh, supports multiple providers, yeah. So uh, you can actually uh, in the initiation itself says okay, use multiple providers. I'm using a provider for auth service. I'm using provider for the database service, which we are using it deeper in here. So saying, hey, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's here. Uh, give us all the users. Uh, let's see where we are using that. No, not in here. It's in the attendee screen. Yeah, it's so provider.database service and give us all the users. To, to use that provider, we need to create it. And the best place to create it is in, uh, in the main dot dot. Yeah, otherwise we will have to create it there and then use it but we want the data to be uh, shared between different screens. And then the child is the is my app and we, we define the my app. So we took all the code from the main and then we kind of created another uh, class which is a stateless widget and we are just saying, okay, can we navigate to different screen? Uh, so that more or less is our navigation from uh, login into uh, auth, uh, into attendee screen. I'm just going to run this app. On the machine, it always takes some time. Can you maybe also put the emulator uh, on the screen? No, oh. uh, where is it though? Perfect. It's always the first run that takes uh, some time. But it, yeah. it, it's sort of the same also when you do Android or iOS development, and it takes some time. And I think I, I felt it, it's on Windows on my Mac. It actually is it's much faster. Uh, for some reason on, on Windows, it's always kind of slower.
uh, Sumit, okay. what, what branch are you on? Uh, I'm on the same branch, uh, but uh, yeah, if uh, you want to follow, I would be on the authentication branch uh, if you download that. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, okay, let's see if this works. Oh, yeah, I was already logged in, so it actually took me all the way to, uh, yeah, all the way to the attendee screen. And I see a lot of people have already registered. So these are all the users that have registered for the app. Uh, again, let's see if I can click on that. Yeah, I can click on that and log out. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys one more time. So I'm saying I'm logged in as myself. And my password is this. Submit. And once you have done that, it actually takes us to the login screen. Uh, and then when you click on, on uh, let's say Martin, or when you click on something, it actually takes us to the same screen which Martin has done. So that navigation actually works between screens. Yeah. So, so that actually shows how easy was it to actually implement authentication within the app. So what you needed was basically a login screen, uh, an auth service. If you want to store the user yourself, you use the, the database service. And also I've showed you guys some best practices here. Uh, so I saw some of the users, uh, they, are, they don't have the profile image. So I think just for fun, let's just see if we can um, use the, the storage to store user profiles. Yeah. So, um, So I'm going to move uh, the app drawer, which uh, Martin created. Uh, if you remember the app drawer, it had, uh, uh, I think it was uh, an, uh, a profile image, the user. So right now we don't have that here. Yeah. So from the, on the main, again, you can see we are kind of not using that. Yeah, it's not been referenced. So let's just create. And now we know that we can put all our widgets in the widget folder. So we create a, a new file in the widget folder, app underscore wer underscore wid chat dot dot. And, uh, uh, and then what we do is basically, uh, I'm just uh, concerned about time. And let's see if we can finish it in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to copy the whole code here. Just quickly uh, explaining uh, what we are doing. Um, so uh, we have the app drawer, it's a stateful widget. Uh, it's almost the same code. So we have a drawer and that contains the circle avatar, the name and the bio. What we want to do is basically uh, the user to edit the profile. And then when he clicks on the edit profile, it actually goes to an edit profile screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and then uh, over here, uh, just have uh, the home icon, uh, the home and the attendance. So it's almost like a, like a drawer with uh, two other links which can navigate, but it's all uh, right now it doesn't go anywhere because it's not on tab. So uh, on the attendee screen, uh, we, uh, so we moved it uh, from the main, uh, so we don't need it in the main. Yeah, so this was kind of hard coded, almost the same code. And on the attendee screen, what we can do is we can, in a build method, call the app drawer. Yeah. So same as what we did, we actually bring it closer to our scaffold, drawer equals to new app drawer, and then reference that. What we will also do is we don't need the, the hamburger icon because app drawer is going to handle that get rid of our icon. Okay, uh, so we still have something broken here that is uh, the navigation to the edit profile screen. As we uh, know that we need to create a new screen under the screens folder. So I'll actually quickly create a edit underscore file underscore screen. Like that. And same thing, we don't want to spend too much time um, doing coding. Uh, we're just gonna do uh, a quick copy paste. Now let's explain the code. So what we are doing here is, um, 
uh, a lot of code actually, but uh, we have a new screen, which is um, an edit profile screen. Uh, what we need is we need to pick an image from our gallery. Yeah. So we use an image picker library, which we don't have. So we go back to popspec.yaml and uh, don't have the code for that. So what I do is basically on my, uh, on my VS code, I have uh, uh, an extension from a very good friend, uh, Giron. Um, he, um, he contributes a lot on Flutter and this is called as popspec assist. I have the link in my notes. And then what you can do is basically, uh, if you know what you want, you can type that uh, here. So what we want is an image picker. So I M A G E underscore I C. Uh, let me see if that's exactly what we need. Yeah, image picker. So and it automatically brings it in your dependencies. Yep. Uh, so we have the image picker. Uh, let's see what else is not working here. Okay, it's bringing it from Postback. Meanwhile, let's just go through the code. Um, so display profile image, if it's null, uh, it actually shows a placeholder image. Otherwise it's bringing it from the, uh, from the network. Uh, and then it has a different, um, uh, it has different, uh, different text boxes. So what we need is basically, we need to upload the image. We don't, uh, we don't have a place to upload the image, but if you remember, we actually have a new storage. So we, in the storage, we would like to store that profile image of the particular user. I'm surprised I don't have this working. Uh, so uh, storage service dot upload profile image, um, uh, and then it, pro it gives the profile image of the user that we have picked using the image picker. At the same time, we will like to update the user data with the profile URL. So first thing we'll do is basically update our database and create a, a new function called as update user. This is gonna take the user, username and the profile image uh, and the bio if you want to update that. Uh, so that is being fixed. So the only thing left is a storage service. So the storage service again with uh, all our services will go in our services folder. I create a new class, storage service. Okay. And then um, with the magic of copy paste, we will bring it. So uh, what it does is basically we have a function which uploads the profile image on uh, in the cloud. Uh, what we would like to do is we see if the image already exists. We don't want to keep on uploading a lot of images for the same user. We check using regex uh, with the ID of the user and if it is uh, empty, uh, we will upload it. Otherwise we'll update that. Yeah. So we'll get the uh, URL and uh, if the photo ID matches, we will do that. But we don't want to store so that people may be uploading like um, uh, images that are um, high resolution. So we'd like to compress that. So it's just a quick compression function, which compresses the image. And there is a library for that, which we will include. So more or less, I uh, think we just need the compression library. Yeah. I'm just going through our uh, popspec.yaml and update it. Get all the libraries that we need. So I already have that. Okay, so we have the image compressor, path provider, um, a unique ID. Uh, so what it does is basically generates unique ID and an image picker. Uh, hit save. Uh, 
and this is where it things get slower uh, because it has to uh, recompile. Now there is a note uh, on image breaker. Uh, so if you are trying this on iOS, um, I'm going to quickly show this one uh, from image breaker. It's a few steps you have to do. So for Android, it actually doesn't need any configuration, but for iOS, what it needs is it needs a NS photo library description in the info list and NS camera user description. We are not using microphone, we don't care. Uh, so what you need to do is basically, uh, I'm going to share this note here. Open the, uh, the folder, right click on iOS on the Mac and open the uh, open in Xcode. And over here you have info P list. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, yeah. And then uh, just add these two um, uh, key value pairs in your info P list for it to work with iOS. Okay, uh, it's a bit slow. Okay, let's see. So we have, uh, uh, so we don't have any errors left on our uh, files. I'm just gonna do a quick hard reload. Uh, and okay, we've got some, some, some users here. I think it didn't reload yet, or did it? Let's see. Oh. Stop one more time. Okay, I'll continue while it is loading. So um, what we have is basically, uh, we have a, a screen that has all our attendees, and then we have, uh, in this case, uh, a way to upload the images on to our Firebase uh, storage. Uh, but what we were more interested in is to have chats going on, yeah? so. Um, we need to store the chat in the, in the database and also retrieve the chat. We already have a database service with us, yeah? So it actually gets and sets, uh, the updates the user. So what we can do is we can then uh, uh, extend it and introduce two new functions. One is to get chat and other one would be to, my machine has gone slow. <laughs> Uh, to send chat. So what it does is, um, over here uh, we have a function which says get the chat messages. Uh, it uses the chat reference. Uh, we already have the chat reference in our constants file, uh, which is a new collection of chats. And uh, I would like to know who sent the chat. So we have a sender ID and uh, a from ID and a to ID. Yeah. So whom did I send it and, and and who received it? We also need to know when was that done. That's the timestamp. And uh, and then get all the chats for this particular user. Yeah. So it's going to say a document for each, and then uh, we create a a message list. So I uh, would, uh, we had the messages in our message dot dot, yeah. So we don't want to actually use the dummy data which Martin actually created. What we'll do is we'll refactor our message model to uh, do the same as what we did with users. Um, so we don't have any dummy data. So I'm going to go in and test that out. So it's the same, it has an ID, a sender ID, a two text and image. Light, 
And then uh, the timestamp before was kind of a string. So I said, no, I need a proper timestamp here. And the timestamp is coming from, uh, from uh, Cloud Firestore. And same thing, uh, we have the message from doc, uh, which is the document snapshot. And then we map all the messages. So uh, for some reason, uh, the pop get is not working. Oh, look at that. People are adding stuff. This is our, uh, so from our previous conversation, this is our uh, profile uh, where we can actually edit that profile and then we can uh, change the image profile. It asks for permission. Uh, and then let's see if I can update something here. It's really, really gone slow for me. So hopefully it works for you guys, uh, but you can see that you can actually edit uh, all the profiles. I don't see any errors. It's just the machine or the uh, emulator had uh, and the Zoom all together had made my machine kind of a bit slow. So uh, I am not even getting this uh, right now. Uh, so on the on the class for message, I uh, think I may have to revert to the GitHub. Uh, Are you going to change uh, to a different branch now? I may have to because I'm not getting <laughs> the. Hmm. Uh, you can just uh, stash all your things that you've done. Yeah, yeah, but then it's a big compilation, isn't it? So I'm just gonna yeah. put that. Uh, so I'm going to just copy this. Yeah, that's, that's so VS Code <laughs> altogether is kind of being funny. So yeah, so all the timestamp and the document snapshots come from Cloud Firestone. So we fixed our messages. We back to our chat screen. So chat screen says, I do not understand the messages because it was hard coded before. So we may have to go into the database to get those messages. Yeah. Uh, before that, uh, uh, we introduced the timestamp and we need just the time from the date. So I will quickly go to our const file and introduce uh, a date format. Date format actually again needs another package from Dart. It, uh, I was surprised that this is not within uh, within uh, Dart or within uh, Flutter. Uh, it needs a package called as Intel. So I will bring in that package. Save that. Okay. That's working, that's good. <laughs> so uh, going back to the chat, for a chat screen, uh, we need to um, have message coming from the database. But uh, as we can see, when we are navigating within the app, um, we have a user. When we click on the user, this is from the current user to Laura or to Martin. So we need the from and to. So what I'll, I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this to my chat screen as uh, in my constructor. So chat screen, stateful widget, um, current user and to user. So now we got access to our from and to. So we delete our list of messages. And then what we'll do is basically we build it. Yeah. So for that, we need access to our database service. So uh, 
we got our database service and the database service is going to go in and get all the chat messages. Uh, so we will bring in our provider and don't we have it in our database service? Send chat is there. Get chat is there. This bracket, bracket. Okay, I may have overwritten something. I'm going to go to hold of the database dot dot. Okay, um, I kind of uh, made a mistake doing copy paste. So database service uh, has a get chat and it says, give me the chat from the current user to this user. Uh, it's a list of messages and that will be passed on to our uh, build message and build message is going to sh uh, show that. Yeah. So we may have an error here saying, okay, the time is, uh, uh, it was a string. I don't understand timestamp. So I'm just going to quickly update that. So if you remember, uh, we have a constants file. In the constants file, there was a time format. So I'm just going to say use the time format and then format the message timestamp to date. And extra comma. So remove that. So we got that fixed. And then uh, over here, we okay uh, over here we have uh, the message that we created and it was hard coded sender and and receiver so what we'll do is we'll modify our submit to uh, use the new uh, message model uh, yeah so it's it's not it hasn't changed much. It's the same. It clears the the text message controller. Uh, if there's a message, uh, we will actually use uh, the current user ID uh, to the sender ID and the uh, uh, and the user that was selected to the two user ID. We will actually send the current date time as a timestamp and we will insert into the database. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is basically, uh, if you remember, there was uh, this thing where if the sender is the current user, now we know who is the sender because I'm, uh, we are the sender and we have it passed to the widget. So we will uh, update that and say the sender is the current user ID. Okay, so uh, the chat screen is called from the attendee screen, yeah, and uh, what we need to do is basically, uh, if you uh, if you look at the widget, we were navigating to the chat screen from from here when you tap on one of those uh, uh, blocks. So uh, we need to pass uh, the user, uh, the sender, and the receiver. So uh, it's a very easy one, where we will say, "Give me the current user and." the user ID, which is this object uh, that we use to build the block. But this is, I do not understand the user ID because we never passed it. So in our build method, we will pass the user ID. And over here, you'll see the benefit of the provider. I could actually use the provider in the other screen because it's the same user ID. But now, over here, we're just passing it to the screen. So we can say current user ID is provider of the user data and and current user ID. So just using another hop to pass it down. So now it is kind of ready. So let's just uh, refresh the whole thing and see if the chats are not hard coded.
we don't or we do have a, have an error here uh date format is coming from this package okay it looks good Martin, a quick question. I did uh, added a lot of packages. Do you think we need to do a complete clean start or this is going to work? Maybe, maybe. Sometimes when you add new packages like provider or some other packages, you need to restart the the application again. Okay. Do, and you, have then, the app, do you have the app working on your machine, now, Martin? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I changed to to your branch uh, and then okay. worked on that. Let's just see if you can chat with each other. Although, yeah. uh, uh, no, let, let, let's not do that because uh, <laughs> I think we already have a lot of messages between us. So yeah. let's see if this guy works. Uh, hi. Uh, and I think again, to show you guys what we can do is we can actually look in here in our database. Um, as I said, we have a new collection. So we have the chat collection. Wow, there's a lot of people who are chatting already. <laughs> somehow they are ahead of us. So let's see if I can do GDG welcome you. Okay, I saw some blinking. Yep, here we go. So we got the data coming from our chat application all the way into the database. So if this user logs in from a different mobile, he would be able to see uh, this message, GDE welcomes you. So that's why I was asking if you can do that. Uh, a final quick one uh, is um, we saw from the UI that we need to send, uh, uh, so this, this thing doesn't do anything right now, sending images. So we'd like to upload uh, the images within the chat. So uh, I'm going to go back to the code. Uh, any guesses where this will be, although you may be following my, my, my notes. Uh, so we, will, we need to upload an image for uh, the chat message. So we will actually use the storage service and uh, add a new function, which would help us to upload the image. So upload message, uh, which compresses the message. And then uh, what is, uh, is it not underscore? I think it's not. And then it calls the upload image. Oh, funny enough, I don't have upload image here. Upload user profile, compress image. I need an upload image also. So compress image calls an upload image, which um, takes the path, uh, the image ID and the image, and it uploads to the storage. So storage that short, um, uh, and then get download URL. So, uh, so we pass the download URL back to our database. So um, on the, database, we have the, the URL. And then what we'll do is basically, uh, we will update the chat screen. So chat screen can only send uh, text, uh, which is in our build message composers. Uh, so we are only sending uh, the text. So we need to change that and uh, we need to handle the icons also. So, uh, what we'll do is basically in our uh, in our build message, uh, we will take the code and uh, where we are showing uh, where is that? Uh, 
the text. Uh, da, da, da. If it's me, column, yeah. So where we are showing the text, yeah, um, we will basically say, no, I need to also see if I can send an image. So we'll take this code and we will put this, place it here. So we said, okay, if the image URL is null, show me the text, otherwise show me an image. Yep. I think I have an additional uh, bracket. Yeah, that's better. So we need two new method to uh, take care of that. So one is for building text, which is the same code as what it was before. And the other one is to uh, show the image. So uh, build image and build text. Build image is basically exactly the same code as before, message text. And then build image is going to have a container which contains uh, an image. And then as we said, it's coming from the network. So we'd like to use the cache network image provider. Uh, the next thing to fix is our camera icon. So I'm going to look for a camera. Yeah, there is uh, the on press is kind of empty right now. So uh, uh, we will add on press of the camera to actually uh, use the image picker and upload the image. Yep. Uh, so we need to import uh, dot dot IO, the image picker. And I think I have an additional, yeah. Okay, so we import the story service uh, so that we can upload the message. The next thing is basically um, uh, if the image is uploaded, we need to send the image URL, otherwise we need to send the text. So we need to also update our submitted method. Uh, so the submitted method will now take two parameters. Uh, one is image URL and text. Um, so I'm going to update that like this. So again, going to the code uh, is saying if text is null, you're not sending a text, uh, you're sending an image. So it's just checking whether if text is null or image is null. If image URL is null, then basically use text, otherwise uh, it's an image. Yeah, so save the image. Uh, and then it's the same code after that. So this is the same code. Okay, so uh, this looks more or less working apart from one thing over here. Uh, if, it is, uh, if it is a text send, we may have to handle that. So we can say handle text controller text and no image and that is more or less it because we already handled the submit on the camera. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, uh, we fixed that piece of code and see if we can start sending receiving images. So it's going to blow up. Uh, but I just let's just wait it to do that. Uh, good. Uh, when I go to the screen and when I click on that, it's going to say, hey, I'm not going to work. Uh, let's just say, be careful with Corona. Yeah, so over here somewhere it says um, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, and the reason for that is, um, is we have not added our storage to uh, so we have the storage service here, but we have not added our storage to the providers. Yeah. So we will actually add that. Okay. Can I do a clean start because it's almost to the end. And if this works, uh, you have the 
chat application completed. Okay, meanwhile, it is loading. Um, any questions or uh, anyone even left? <laughs> uh, any questions, anyone? Nope. <laughs> it was a long night. I think it's uh, 9.30. I was not expecting to go there. But all the code and everything else is, is shared with you guys. You can actually go through that step by step. Um, it's all there on GitHub. Uh, just to give you guys an example, uh, I kind of uh, uploaded it here also in my uh, on my device and uh, when i look into uh, the chats um, basically you can uh, yeah you can try it on your uh, on your device the same code actually works with uh, yeah. okay uh, Hopefully this is almost the end of our chat. I'm just gonna do one more thing. Um, so let's me just log in and the login actually works. Uh, we have different chats and I click on this user. We can see the image from, from here. I can give you another image. Um, okay. Uh, I think that this, uh, there is some, uh, some problem. Uh, unable to decode the string yeah uh, so sometimes what happens is basically uh, uh, I have already had this application on my emulator and then I have to give permissions on Android but this actually works on uh, uh, on iOS completely yeah so uh, this is basically saying I'm not able to get access to the image uh, so just uninstall and install it on your emulator one last thing, if you notice uh, on the design, we had uh, the, the icon and whom I'm sending to, because uh, from here, I do not know whom I'm sending to. So I'm just quickly gonna add that to our app bar. So uh, I, again, copy some code and uh, on my chat screen, I would go to the, the build. Then in, in here, instead of saying, show me the chat, I would say, show me the user profile. Now, uh, over here, I'm using a widget dot two user and two user right now is uh, a string. So what I'll do is basically, I will change that to user itself. And wherever it says widget dot two user, I'll say widget dot two user dot ID. Should have done two user. And I think it's one more place where I'm using that. So widget dot user dot id, and then we know that we are passing it from here. So just pass the entire user down, uh, and to user, uh, refresh the app. And we'll see the icon and the name of the user here. So if we do not have any questions, um, let's see if this still works. So we got the icon and the user for our app. Oh, someone literally, up who is that? Someone really up updated the icon, the image also. So that's good. So uh, that's it for Just from me. us. <laughs> Just you, okay. <laughs> Uh, so that's it from us today. I'm just going to present the last bit of it. Um, so 
the resources are all here. Um, uh, you can uh, so whatever I have gone through. Actually, there is a course from Marcus, and uh, you can actually go through the course if you want to um, uh, go a bit more further. There are a few good apps he has been building. Uh, there is this uh, GitHub account from Martin, uh, myself. You can actually follow through the entire thing yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, if any questions, reach out to us. And that's a wrap. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining.